Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. Okay, lesson 22, equivalent rational expressions. Okay. Classwork opening exercise on your own or with a partner. Write two fractions that are equivalent to one third and use the slips of paper to create a visual model to justify your response. Alrighty, here we go. A fraction equivalent to one third. Well, what is one third? Well, if I did a model first and I had this rectangle back in sixth grade, we introduced what were called um, Hang on, I'm struggling here. Tape diagrams, all righty. That's what I was trying to say while I was trying to struggle. So a tape diagram is a diagram that is split up evenly. So let's pretend these are even. How about right there? Okay, so this is one third and this is a one third. So the two are two thirds and this is one third. So three thirds equals a whole one. So it says write two fractions that are equivalent to one third. Well, then what I could do is just split this thing down the middle like so. And now these two are the same one third, but there are now, <laughs> there are now two of them out of a total of six. Okay, and I could keep doing that. Then I could just move this up and add another segment here. And so now these three were the original one third and now there's three of them. So that would be um, three out of a total of nine and so on and so on and so on. So there would be a visual shading this one over here obviously with the three. So two six or three ninths would be two examples of fractions equal to one third. So what are we doing in this lesson? Uh, equivalent rational expressions. So what we're going to do is take a polynomial P and divide it by a polynomial Q such that Q of X, say P of X divided by Q of X, such that Q of X can't equal zero. Okay, because we can't divide by zero. So that's what we're doing in this lesson. That's what we're building up to. And so example one says to consider the following rational expression two times the quantity a minus one minus two divided by six times the quantity a minus one minus three a. So it says to turn to your neighbor and discuss the following. For what values of a is the expression undefined? So we have undefined expressions when the denominator equals zero. So to answer this question, we would say, well, six times a minus one minus three a cannot equal zero, because if it does, this is undefined. So we're going to solve for a. So if I distribute, I get 6a minus 6 minus 3a equals zero. Okay, so I just distributed the 6. And then I'm going to combine like terms. 6a minus 3a is 3a. Bring down that minus 6 equals zero. Isolating a, we would have to add six to the other side, giving us three a equals six. Isolating a, getting rid of that times three, we would divide both sides by three, and therefore a equals two would be the value that would make this zero. And I'm going to check that. Six times two minus one minus three times two. So I plugged in my a, and now I'm going to check this. So I'm going to do PEMDAS, order of operations, uh, parentheses first, two minus one is one, minus three times two. And then I multiply before I subtract. So six times one minus three times two, and six minus six does in fact equal zero. So therefore I can confirm that A cannot equal two. That would make this undefined. Okay, page two brings us to the exercises. Notice there are no more examples. These are exercises. Do it on your own, pause the video, see if you can do them. And try doing one at a time. So pause the video, do A, 
check your answer, pause it again, do B and so on. So reduce the following rational expressions to lowest terms and identify the values of the variables that must be excluded to prevent division by zero. So we have two times the quantity X plus one plus two and two X plus three times X plus one minus one. Now, keep in mind that you cannot just cancel these X plus ones. This plus sign here and this minus sign prevent us from just canceling those out. It's gotta be all multiplication in order for us to cancel a factor. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this. So I'm gonna set this equal to, and I'm going to distribute two X plus two plus two over, so what did I just do? I just distributed 2x plus 2 plus 2. And then if I distribute this, okay, then it's going to be um, 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 1 is 2x. 3, 3 times x is 3x. I'm doing the middle O and the I together. So 2x plus 3x is 5x. And then 3 times 1 is 3. And then we have that minus one off to the side here. Okay, so now I'm going to combine these. 2x plus 2 plus 2 is 2x plus 4 divided by 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 minus 1, which is 2. Okay, so now we have this. Now I can factor these out a different way. So I can factor out a 2 now. So this would be 2 times the quantity x plus 2. Okay, so we're just manipulating these polynomials. Um, in this one, it is going to be 2x times something with an x. Okay, so I need a 2 at the end, so I need a, a 2 and a 1, but I need that to add up to 5 in the middle. So if I put a 1 here and a 2 here, this is all addition, so it makes it easier. So first is 2x times x, which is 2x squared. Outer would be 2x times 2, which is 4x. 1x in the middle, 4x plus 1x is 5x, and 1 times 2 is 2. So there we have them rewritten. And now I have all multiplication here. No more adding, subtracting outside of our factors. And I have a factor of x plus 2 and a factor of x plus 2 that cancels. So this reduces to 2 over 2x plus 1. But it also says, and identify the value of the variables that must be excluded to prevent division by 0. So then I just take this 2x plus 1 and set it equal to 0. What makes that 0? Well, 2x equals negative 1 and divide both sides by 2 and I get x equals negative 1 half. Okay. So this is the value that X can't be. And this is the reduced factored form. So this is equal to two over two X plus one, so long as X does not equal negative one half. If I put negative one half in here though, now watch what I'm going to do. I'm gonna show you something. If I put negative one half in here, what's that going to be? Two times a negative one half. I'm substituting into the original denominator plus three times x, which is negative one half plus one minus one, two times a negative one half is negative one plus three. And then negative one half plus one is positive one half minus one. Then I get negative one plus three, which is two times a half, which is one and one minus one is zero. So that just shows that putting it into the original, x cannot equal negative a half, but it wasn't clear here. X could also not equal to um, let's see, is that it? I think that's it. Okay, no, that is not it. So this could also have been gotten from here and it'd be easier to just look at these factors. And notice this one here, even though it canceled, X cannot equal, so let me fix this, X cannot equal negative two. Okay, 
Okay, and certain scenarios are going to occur here. Uh, something happens when one of the things that cancels can't be zero, and something happens when it doesn't cancel can't be zero. And we'll get into that in a future uh, video. But at this point, just keep in mind the canceled factor denominator also cannot be equal to zero. Okay. Okay, B. Factoring x squared minus x minus six is going to give me an x and an x. Factors of negative six that add up to negative one would be minus three and plus two. So x minus three times x plus two equals this. And then I'm going to factor out a five x on the bottom and that will leave x plus two. So there are my factors and these cancel. So I'm, and I end up with this equaling x minus three over five x, where x cannot equal, and I look at my two uh, factors, x plus two, what makes that zero? Negative two, and x cannot equal, what makes five x zero? Zero. Okay, pretty quick. Uh, next one. Can't factor three minus X. So this is going to equal still three minus X over something. These are differences of squares. Square root of the first term plus or minus the square root of the second term. So X squared minus nine factors out to be X plus three, X minus three. This is a positive three. This is a negative X. This is something where we'd have to rewrite as negative one times X minus three. So if I distribute this, I get negative one, negative one times X is negative X, negative one times negative three is positive three, and they're just rearranged. So hopefully you see that you have to do this whenever you have them backwards. And now I put it under X plus three times X minus three. And now you see that the X minus threes cancel and I get negative one over X plus three, such that X does not equal negative three or positive three. And this is the simplified form and the restriction on our domain. All right, so D, here we go. Numerator, there's a three in both terms. I'll factor out a three that will leave me X minus Y and divide, and I do not see, I see a difference here. So I have an a squared minus two ab plus b squared. Okay, so what if I had y minus x times y minus x? y times y is y squared. y times negative x is negative xy. Negative x times y is negative xy. That'll give me negative two xy's. And a negative times a negative is positive and x times x is x squared. So there it is. y minus x times y minus x. But I have an x minus y. So I need to multiply by negative one, making this a negative three and making the y positive and the x negative. And then I'm going to rewrite the bottom as y minus x times y minus x. And then you see that the one of the y minus x's cancels in the bottom and I'm left with negative three divided by y minus x. So what's our restriction here? Well, y cannot equal x because three minus three is zero, two minus two is zero, four minus four is zero. So the restriction here is a little different, just that X and Y cannot be equal. Okay, page three brings us to the end of a very short lesson. So review the lesson summary and go to your problem set. 